Hey guys, it's Brett and thanks for stopping by my channel. So, awards season continues to roll along. We saw the Emmys this past Monday. We now have a short list for the Booker Prize. The long list for the Giller Prize in Canada has been announced. Yesterday, the rollout for the National Book Awards is being announced with young adult fiction and translated fiction both having been announced. The best thing is when you record something and have never pressed play. All right, so the National Book Award. I never really was aware of the National Book Award except for seeing stickers on the books when I go to the bookstore and figured, oh, this must be something highbrow. But it wasn't until probably the last year or so that I really began to look at it. But I still, even up to this year, didn't really understand kind of what the National Book Foundation stood for. So I just wanted to read from their website. The mission of the National Book Foundation is to celebrate the best literature in America, expand its audience, and ensure that books have a prominent place in American culture. That is, of course, unless you live in one of the states where parents are trying to take books out of libraries. <laughs> All right, so what I have done today, focusing clearly just on um, 10 fiction books. The prerequisites for the National Book Award, it had to have been published the last week of December 2021 through the last week of November 2022 to qualify. So all of these following books uh, do. These are just wild for shits and giggles, stabs in the dark, We'll see what happens in two days. I just kind of had fun thinking about it and think, hmm, I wonder that if that's gonna come up. So let me start with some books I've already talked about, something more recent. Demon Copperfield by Barbara Kingsolver. I think this could be something just because of its uh, portrayal, the updated version of David Copperfield set in the Appalachian Mountains that has to do with uh, opium, opium addiction. This sounds like something that could be right up that alley. So the next book was a book that I read. It came out at the end of last year. I read it the January of this year. And frankly, it's one of my favorite books this year. It's Tell Me How to Be by Neil Patel. It is about an Indian American family. Um, it's really the story is about the son who is gay and kind of a disaster, who's trying to get his life together. But the book, um, the narrative switches between he and his mother and her journey from India to America. And it's really a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful novel. I loved it so much. Again, this is something, it would be completely out of left bank. I don't even know how many people have this on the radar, but this would be really cool. Next, he's been there before, Douglas Stewart, Young Mungo. I have no idea. I really liked Young Mungo. I don't know if people thought it was as big of a splash as Shuggy Bane. So, maybe. Another book, I'm actually starting this next, Brother Alive by Zayn Khalid, about three adopted brothers and um, their father. It, seems again because of the multicultural aspect of it um, it seems like such a big immigrant american story this has gotten fantastic reviews um, i'm covering up his name so this is another one we'll see i would that would be very exciting that's four people that's four woman of light have not read this yet um, this is about an indigenous chicano family in the american west from the author of the national Book Award finalist Sabrina and Karina. So there you go. There could be a chance for this. Um, I've heard really great things about this. I got this from um, Parnassus Books First Edition Club, signed First Edition Club. That's where that's from. Um, all right, two books that were also uh, on the Booker Long List Night Crawling by Layla Motley. It would be really exciting for her. I don't think we've heard the end of this book yet. So this is one book that I think potentially maybe could get up there. And the second is Trust, which um, I was talking about this the other day on Instagram. I have my own feelings about Trust, which is I do think it's a very cold book, but in terms of construction, 
I think it's brilliant. And I also think that um, it's such a story about um, uh, America and um, business and finance and that this I could totally see ending up on at least the long list. This is a really kind of out of left field. Part of it I think is I just love her. I have not read this yet. Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, I don't even know much about it, but, and so I'm not even gonna go in and read it for you right now, but this is called my like stab in the dark choice. I mean, let's be honest, all of these, all of these are stab in the dark choices. Some are a little more informed because frankly I've read them. So this is my like, have not read it wild card? Let's see. All right, and then a few more that I don't actually have physical copies of. Uh, if I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. Again, this feels like an, it's another immigrant story about a, a family that moves from uh, to to Miami. I think is absolutely could be something that ends up on this list and it's getting such critical acclaim. It would be really cool. Next, I think something that has a really good shot is The Swimmers by Julia Tsuka about a group of swimmers at a swimming pool where uh, a crack appears and kind of what it does to everybody. But then the story really centers on one of the swimmers who is a woman that has Alzheimer's and her relationship with her daughter. Uh, it's a very slender, powerful book. Again, seems like something that could very much end up on this. The last two, uh, the first one is Celeste Ng's Our Missing Hearts, which actually comes out October 4th. This is a story about uh, a kind of a dystopian futuristic novel where the children of dissidents and this particular story, Chinese dissidents can be taken from their families and uh, one woman and her son. It sounds terrific. I have not read it yet. I know a few people who have read it already and said it's just fantastic. Um, but I think she's crazy talented and it seems again like something that very much um, could fall under this list. And my final book uh, that is also coming out later, it comes out September 20th, is Elizabeth Strout's Lucy by the Sea. This is a little bit of more of a, a stab as well, although I feel it, it really could be something that's on there. Strout obviously is on the short list for the Booker Prize with her previous book, O. William, and this book takes place immediately after O. William with the character of Lucy and William and many others uh, facing COVID and the lockdown. So I think this is great. And it, you'll hear me talk about this again when I do my Tuesday lay down either next week or the following. So, all right, that is what I think Tell me what you guys think. Tell me other titles that you think could end up here. Tell me what you think definitely won't end up here. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. If I'm right, let me know. I'd love to hear. Uh, and we'll find out Friday. So have a great day, everybody, wherever you are. Thanks for watching. And again, if you like what you've seen here today, please like and subscribe. And I will see you all soon.